What's going on guys? In this one we're going to be making a quick bruschetta or bruschetta, however you want to pronounce it depending on where you are in the world. This one's fun to make, easy to do and guaranteed to impress anyone you serve it to. Please sit back, relax and enjoy. Alright guys, let's start us off with one bottle of balsamic vinegar and with this we're going to turn it into a reduction that becomes the perfect glaze for not only this recipe but thousands of others. To do this, place a medium to large size saucepan over a high heat, empty out the contents of the whole balsamic vinegar bottle which is 500 milliliters or 2 cups and you can half this if you don't want to have any glaze left over. To this I'm also adding in one quarter of a cup or 50 grams of brown sugar to cut back the acidity but this is easily left out with no further changes to the original recipe or method. Give this a quick mix to break up the sugar helping it start to melt and bring this concoction to a boil and once achieved reduce the heat to medium and simmer for 12 minutes or until reduced down to roughly half a cup or 125 milliliters worth. This has now been reducing for 12 minutes, the water content has mostly evaporated and it's now nice and concentrated, and if it coats the back of the spoon, it shows us that it's good to go. Allow this to cool for a few minutes, mainly until it's stopped bubbling, then remove this from the stovetop and immediately extract it from the hot saucepan into a bowl. I've seen a lot of people pour this into plastic, which is stupidly dangerous, as the plastic will become really thin and melt, and this glaze is hot like lava and will cause serious damage to you and your kitchen. Once in a bowl, this can then be placed into the fridge to cool, and this will last easily up to one month, if not longer. Now that that's done, here I have one loaf of tiger bread, but you can use any bread of your choice, and with this, slice as many pieces as you want. It also doesn't matter how thin or thick it is, really, it is all about just doing what you prefer. And with the end pieces, dry them out and make some breadcrumbs. I use this bread because it has a beautiful crust and very soft center, but sourdough is also incredible for this bruschetta. Also, don't forget to vacuum all the crumbs, for some reason I made such a mess. Next for this delicious recipe is 200 grams or 7.05 ounces of cherry tomatoes, with these being a mix of heirloom red and yellow romas. With the smaller ones, simply slice them in half, but with the larger ones, these can be quartered, making sure everything is evenly bite-sized, leaving us with all of this. For the next ingredient, here we have 5 grams or 0.2 ounces of freshly picked basil leaves that we can slap onto the bench, scrunch it into a tight bunch to make it easier to work with, and come through with a sharp knife to slice it into thin strips, with the correct culinary term being chiffonade. Once that's done, add the cherry tomatoes to a mixing bowl along with the chiffonade basil, drizzle it up with 1 tablespoon or 20 milliliters of extra virgin olive oil, season to taste with sea salt flakes, and of course, don't forget the 10 cracks of black pepper. Get your hands in there to give this a quick mix and then place this in the fridge for the time being. To toast the bread, place a large pan over a high heat, pour in 1 tablespoon or 20 milliliters of olive oil and once hot, add in the sliced bread, rubbing it through the oil to get it well coated and fry the bread for 1.5 to 2 minutes or until very lightly golden, then flip and repeat. Personally, I prefer very lightly toasted bread, but by all means toast it longer to your preference and once that's done, gently pick it up and remove. Alternatively, you can just chuck the bread into a toaster to save dishes depending on how you like your bread. Anyway, once that's done, get yourself one clove of freshly peeled garlic, slice it in half to then gently rub it over the surface of the bread which creates an incredible garlic infusion and background flavor. Also, don't discard the garlic once it's done, it's still perfectly fine to use in other recipes. Now to assemble, gently place the tomato and basil mix on top of the bread with the amount being up to you but it is good to get quite a bit on there. Then here I have some Persian feta which is incredibly creamy and has amazing flavour. This can be gently broken up and placed on top of those fresh tomatoes and you can use Greek feta if you can't get hold of Persian. Once that's done, carefully transfer them to a serving board or plate and this is where we can whip out our balsamic vinegar and gently drizzle it over the top to add a nice sweet and acidic finishing touch. Don't forget to garnish with fresh basil leaves for that gourmet touch, then hit these up with a crack or two of black pepper, leaving us with these beautiful, fresh and extremely tasty bruschettas that are perfect for any occasion. There's then only one thing left to do, and that is, we can then dig in. 